Good. Hey everybody, welcome to Camping with Steve. It's my second time this week camping. The last one I half filmed and then got scared off by bears. A lot of bears in the area there and no cell service and I was by myself. So I'm doing something a little different for this week's video. I'm in a campground away from all those bears and I'm going to kind of set up a tarp fortress because we've all been here before. A busy public campground in the summertime. Sites are very close together. You can see the people beside you, they can see you. You can certainly hear them. Not much better than a Walmart parking lot with trees. So, we're gonna tarp this place in like it's a crime scene investigation and hopefully out of sight, out of mind. Big tarps, little tarps, long tarps, skinny tarps. 400 feet of paracord. And let's let the show begin. So the biggest offender to privacy is the road right there. We'll cover that up first with a 12 footer. already nail in the tree. Okay, that's easier. I'm not the first person with this plan. This is a major span, gonna have to be like a triple tarp. So I'll lay them out, stitch them together, and this one will require the ladder for sure. That'll be good. Better already. Step one, block out the neighbors. Step two, step two. Oh, yeah. It's hot today, by the way. Uh, not quite a heat wave, but not comfortable to be stringing tarps. The wind is ruffling around my privacy shade. So I'm gonna borrow a few tent pegs from my tent to stake it down. Who actually needs to see the nature when you can rest assured knowing it's there right behind the tarp? Actually, the tarp is just blocking me from these other campers over there and from the main road. Move the car over a little to block it some more. And right back here, there's no campsites anywhere out here. And aside for the road, this is like my own private campground right here. Love it. Yep. I'm sure glad there's no bears around here. In a rare display of relevant outdoors knowledge, I actually know that this is a beaked hazelnut. They're native around here and quite common. Inside here, there's a little hazelnut. And normally they get eaten by the birds and deers and stuff before they're ripe. But yes, this is actually a small fruit uh, hazelnut that is completely edible. Not just that, beside it, we've got rose hips. And this is in fact a rose, it's a wild rose. Uh, it's Alberta's official plant. So we got rose hips 
beaked hazelnuts. And if you wouldn't believe it, high bush cranberries right beside. You could probably make a meal out of this. It would be disgusting because they don't sound like they'd go together, but uh, you could. I'm shocked uh, at both the coincidence uh, of finding these and the coincidence that I knew any relative knowledge or could identify them. Still debating on what I want to do for a shelter tonight. I've got the hammock, but there's no good trees. I've got that little tent, but it's really hot and that thing doesn't breathe very well. So it's kind of looking like under the stars by the campfire. I shouldn't freak anybody out because I've got these tarps all over and nobody can see me. And if it does rain, I can crawl under the picnic table, right? Doesn't get any better than that. So from out here, uh, the cloak of privacy. <laughs> that looks horrible. <laughs> from the road, it looks like I'm butchering a hitchhiker. I tried to get a hold of Crazy Neighbor to see if he wanted to come on this trip. However, now that I think about it, two people laughing from behind a tarp one calling the other crazy neighbor, might almost be worse than dead silence coming from behind the tarps. I've never had a tick before in my life, but I felt something under my jeans, so I lifted my pant leg and just flicked it off real quick. Um, I don't know if it was a tick, but if it was, it wouldn't stand a chance of getting through my luxurious mane of leg hair. It's my suspicion that these comically small fire pits are from the era when the park had free firewood. Uh, so they tried to cut down on those expenses. And now that it's sold by the bundle, there's bigger fire pits. So burn, baby, burn. Bats are good because they eat mosquitoes but it means there's mosquitoes, so good thing for the thermosel. Tonight I'm having breakfast for dinner, because all I want is eggs. It is food time, and I've been waiting for this meteorite shower, and I haven't seen anything. Probably because of all the trees and the moon out there. Breakfast for dinner. Green onions. A couple tomato slices. I've got this pie oven, and this is a double, so you can put a lot in there. I figured one regulation sized tortilla will fit into this thing. Let me load it with breakfast stuff. Big shout out to Dave, who is working at the acreage right now, uh, who is having breakfast for dinner because that gave me the idea. Start with a rich bed of double cheddar. Crack a couple eggs in here. Green onions, tomato slices. I'm actually gonna break the eggs so that it forms kind of like uh, scrambled eggs in here. Baby spinach. That looks uh, pretty acceptable. Closed up. And uh, onto the grill. All right, so all these burn parts are gonna go away. And we're going to be left, hopefully, with pure deliciousness. All right. Let's get this onto the tray. Looks like it turned out pretty good. Um, 
but not burned. How's the other side look? Hopefully ditto. Oh yeah. I think this will require a little bit of cooling down, but it's it's held together good. This is like, oh yeah, definitely some cooling down, but like the breakfast sandwich of the century. Before I get rid of this burn part here. Let this cool down and then we'll dig in. This is like a whole new world of uh, camping meals because a tortilla like that fits in these things. Perfect. I'll say this does take a disturbingly long time to cool down, but it uh, actually turned out pretty good. It's not too burned. Um, very delicious. Can't go wrong with ingredients like those as long as it doesn't burn. Not the eggs are cooked. Hmm. Okay, now I'm on a mission to see what I can stick inside of these tortillas and cook this way. Because uh, this is, uh, I guess that's where the kind of some egg dripped out of it or cheese or both. Mm. But this meal was a wise decision. Mm, breakfast or dinner. Highly delicious and I highly recommend that. Still no meteors blasting through the sky yet, but that's okay. Um, I didn't expect much with the trees and all that. Anyway, that last uh, video, I've got it half filmed and uh, I can't really let on what it is because that could affect me refilming it, which is we're planning for Monday or so for next Thursday's video to be the uh, risky one <laughs> that I was talking about. Uh, but with the bears, uh, yeah, I got freaked out because um, that's that's what I do normally in normal bear territory, but this is like grizzly territory. Um, and there is no cell service miles from anywhere. Uh, beautiful view of the sky though, because there's no cities or towns or cell phone towers anywhere nearby so the plan is i'm going out with crazy neighbor probably monday or so and we are going to try and film this thing and it is a stealth camp and this is the first i think the second actual stealth camp that crazy neighbor's gone on with me and this one is a good one so uh I'm excited for that. Uh, the reason for the video, of course, is there is a possibility that we might hit a million subscribers within the week or so. And I didn't want to have that video up until it actually happened. I don't want to be presumptuous. Um, and when I say we, I mean there's a lot of people that help uh, with camping with Steve. It is, uh, you know, there's myself, there is beautiful wife who is actually doing a lot of behind the scenes driving and stuff and coming up with a lot of ideas, recipes, that type of stuff. Crazy neighbor, of course. We have uh, Abby who is helping um, with managing certain uh, things online. Uh, my sister who is also helping out quite a bit. And, uh, Anybody that's uh, been a part of the circle has been involved. We've got, you know, Captain John, all these other random characters. Oh, the smoke is ruining my, my heartfelt. Okay, okay. All these people that have uh, contributed. Uh, you know, Bill McNeil doing uh, great moderation uh, and, and helping in the comments section. And, you know, there's tons of people. So, when I say we, I mean, like, there's a whole bunch of us that... Uh, our lives have uh, kind of changed and focused more like around what are we going to do for videos and, and that type of thing. So I'm rambling on here. All right, I've got my bear spray and I'm going to sleep right on the ground here. Um, crawl in here and 
I'll have my camera handy in case anything interesting happens tonight. It's okay. See? Just a dew-covered sleeping bag on the ground. You don't need much more than that life. It's a big good sleep. See you guys in the AM. Good morning. The temperature in the sleeping bag, 10 out of 10. The uh, lack of precipitation, 10 out of 10. Uh, sleeping right on the gravel, not 10 out of 10. But being in a campground with running water and a flush toilets, 10 out of 10. Let's go check those out. Some of these camping setups are a lot better than just a tarp. Oh, that was cushy. Uh, I didn't film in there because people get a little unreasonable when you walk into a bathroom with a camera. Anyhow, lights, running water, uh, individual shower stalls, not those big gang showers where everybody's dropping soap and snapping towels. It was pure heaven. Um, it's very rare that I find a campsite that actually has the uh, running water and uh, heated uh, bathroom facilities. I don't know how safe these ladders are. Um, you can kind of picture what might happen in a cartoonish way. I think some job sites actually ban these style, but they are convenient. You can take them wherever you need, like right in the car. This thing could be like 20 foot extension ladder if you fold it right out. Thank you everybody who has uh, subscribed. Um, this is, I always thought my channel would stop at like 300,000 subscribers and here we are. Uh, all because we're like a big, uh, big group of friends that all get along. I see the comments, we're all pretty good. Um, not that one guy that sent me an email. Uh, he said he was uh, used to be homeless, and what I'm doing is disgusting and unbelievably offensive. Uh, so, it's not for everybody, I guess. Anyhow, um, so thank you, and congrats to everybody who's having a birthday, um, anniversary, all those other life events. Uh, I am, I'm happy for you. It does, does feel like a big family, and... Uh, the worst compression sack I've ever owned. Like it's the best, but it's the worst to uh, figure out. All right, all right. It's better. Oh. I'm really dreading trying to fit these tarps back in the car. I feel so exposed. Got to get out of here. Folding a tarp with one person is uh, so difficult. That's why I normally just roll them in a ball and stuff them in the car. Huh, not bad. Perfect timing, getting out of here just as the mosquitoes are coming out. Look at that one. Got him. All right. Thanks for joining me, guys. Um, please subscribe if this is your uh, type of thing or you like weird camping. Um, next week will be a humdinger, so just putting that out there. And uh, you catch me Thursday then. But uh, if we do happen to hit a million subscribers sometime before then, um, I'll go live if possible. Uh, so if I'm close to internet or there's good cell service, um, I'll try to time it. But uh, yeah, 
you may see me before then. So, cheers everybody. You've been camping with Steve. Thanks for stopping in.